Welcome to the video on measurement of error in forecasting. Forecasts almost always contain errors. The forecast errors can be classified into two types. First is the bias errors and second is the random errors. Now bias errors occur when there is a consistent mistake that is the forecast is always too high or always too low. Now these errors often are the result of inaccurately estimating the components of demand such as trend, seasonal influence, or cyclical movements. So when these are inaccurately estimated, that is when bias errors occur. For example, if the demand for grocery at a grocery store is steadily increasing, however, the shopkeeper assumes the demand for the last year as the forecast for this year, then the forecast for this year will always be low than the actual demand for this year because he did not take the trend into consideration. So that is because of the bias error that he has not considered the trend. Now let us look at random errors. This type of forecast error is caused by unpredictable factors because of which the forecast deviates from the actual demand. Some reasons of random error could be earth quake fire etc so these are all unpredictable factors now Though the forecast errors may not be completely eliminated, the demand planner has to try and reduce these errors as much as possible. Now in order to reduce the errors in the forecast, first we have to be able to measure the errors. So let us look at some of the ways to measure the forecasting errors. Now the first measure is known as forecast error or deviation. Now this is defined as the difference between the actual demand and the forecast for a given period. So ET which is the forecast error is equal to AT minus FT where ET is equal to 
deviation or forecast error for period t a t is equal to the actual demand for period t and f t is equal to forecast for period t. So what this is saying is at the beginning of the period t we have assumed a certain forecast and at the end of period t we have the actuals for that period. So let's find out how different was the actual from the forecast and that is the forecast error or deviation. So this is one of the measures of the forecast errors. Now this is the forecast error for a single period. However, if we can find out the cumulative or running sum of the forecast errors it can provide us with some valuable information. So that is our next measure which is known as running sum of forecast errors. This is also known as R S F E. So R for running, S for sum, F for forecast, E for errors. Running sum of forecast errors. So basically the running sum of forecast errors is the sum of the forecast error for all the periods. So R S F E is equal to the sum of the error for period T where T is equal to 1 to N. Now again the same thing R S F E is the running sum of forecast errors and E T is equal to deviation or forecast error for period t. Now when we calculate the sum of forecast errors, the large positive errors will be offset by the large negative errors. Let us look at a graph to understand that. So as shown in this graph, the black line represents the actual demand while the blue dotted line represents the forecast. So as the forecast error is actual minus the forecast. So here the actuals are higher than the forecast. So this is positive and here the actual demand is lesser than the forecast. So here this is negative. So this positive and negative will cancel out each other and if we take the total of the error then the error will be equal to 0 approximately. Now let us look at the second graph here. Now in this case we can see that the forecast is always lower than the actual demand. So if you take the difference between the actual demand and the forecast and keep on adding it, the cumulative 
RSFE will keep on increasing because there is a difference between the actual demand and the forecast for each of the periods. So the cumulative forecast error will keep on increasing. So this increasingly large error indicates some kind of a systematic deficiency in the forecasting approach. Maybe the demand planner has not considered a trend element or a cyclical influence or seasonal influence. Now let us look at an example to understand how to calculate the forecast error or deviation and the running sum of forecast errors. So as shown in this table, we have been given the actual demand and the forecast for each of the eight months. So first we have to find out the deviation which is nothing but the actual demand minus the forecast. So let us find out the deviation for each of these months. So for first one the deviation is 200 minus 225 which is minus 25 next 240 minus 220 which is 20 next 300 minus 285 which is 15 next 270 minus 290 which is minus 20 next is 230 minus 250 which is again minus 20 Next is 260 minus 240 which is 20. Next is 210 minus 250 which is minus 40. Next is 275 minus 240 which is 35. So this is the deviation or the forecast error for each of the months. So this is also ET. Next let's find out the running sum of forecast errors. So this is equal to the sum of the deviation or the forecast errors. So let's find out for each of the periods what is the running sum of forecast errors. So first is minus 25. Next is minus 25 plus 20 which is minus 5. Then minus 5 plus 15 which is 10. Now 10 minus 20 which is minus 10. Minus 10 minus 20 which is minus 30. Minus 30 plus 20 which is minus 10 minus 10 minus 40 which is minus 50 and minus 50 plus 35 which is minus 15. So cumulative of all these is minus 15. So minus 15 is the running sum of forecasting error for these 8 months. Now you can also find this minus 15 by simply adding this so this will again give you minus 15. Let's quickly do that. So let's first add the positive number. So 20 plus 15 which is 35 plus 20 which is 55 plus 35 which is 90. So 90. Now let's add the negative number. So minus 25 minus 20 which is minus 45 minus 20 which is minus 65 and minus 40 which is minus 105. So 90 minus 105. So 90 minus 105 is again minus 15. Now what does this figure of minus 15 mean? So basically what we got is sigma AT minus FT is equal to minus 15 where T is equal to 1 to N and is 8 in this case. So basically what we are saying here is when we add 
all the deviations for each of the months that is when we subtract for each month when we subtract the forecast from the actuals and add all of them for each of the months then we get a figure of minus 15 so what this means is that the forecast is more than the actuals that is why we are getting a negative number so what that means is our forecast is higher than the actuals so we are overestimating the forecast than what it should be so this is how you can interpret the forecast using these two measures in the next video which is part two we will look at some other measures of forecasting error such as mean squared error standard deviation and mean absolute deviation